On this edition of Early Look, I'm going to be taking a look at the lightweight fight as part of UFC 299 between Dustin Poirier, Benoit Saint-Denis, five-round matchup taking place in Miami, Florida on March 9th. And if you never watched a show before, my name is James Lynch. I'm going to go through a bunch of different stuff. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you my prediction for this fight. Would love to hear your prediction after you're done watching this video. And a quick tale of the tape tells us that Dustin Poirier, the diamond is 29 and 8. Benoit Saint-Denis, 13 and 1, 35 to 28. So big age gap there. 5 foot 9 to 5 11. Saint-Denis a little bit taller, but they both have the same reach advantage at 73. Let's start first with the diamond Dustin Poirier as we dig a little bit more into this fight. So another five round fight for Poirier. Benoit Saint-Denis has never fought five rounds, so we'll see if that pays dividends in the matchup or not, or if it even gets there. I mentioned it there, Dustin Poirier, 35 years old, uh, five foot nine with a 73 inch reach. So no major advantages other than the fact that he's got a lot more experience, has fought far better competition overall. Uh, he's a BJJ black belt under Tim Crater. He's trains at an American top team. He's currently ranked number three in the lightweight division. He was the former interim lightweight champion. He's got fight of the night eight times. Don't need to go through all those names there. He's got submission of the night one time against Max Holloway. He's got performance of the night four times in his career. Uh, he's also uh, tied with Drew Dober for most knockouts in UFC lightweight division history. He's got a bunch of other accolades. I mean, you know, Poirier coming back from the WEC days to getting into the UFC. He has one of the most storied careers in the UFC. He's got a 21 and seven record in the UFC, including seven stoppage victories. Uh, Poirier made his amateur debut way back in December of 2007. If you look at it there, fought a guy by the name of Wesley Branch, then made his professional debut in May of 2009, made his UFC debut back at UFC 125 in January of 2011. So he's one of the fighters that's been on the roster for quite some time. Um, made his... Uh uh, sorry, I should say he's uh, 20. Yeah, I mentioned he's 21 and 7 in the UFC. He's got 14 stoppage victories. Uh, he's also fought in different weight classes. So Poirier's fought 26 times at lightweight. He's fought 10 times at featherweight. And he's had two catchweight fights. Some notable wins for Poirier in his career include Josh Grisby. We got to mention that one because Grisby back, at the, back in the day, he was 14 and 1 at the time. Uh, he's got two wins over Max Holloway. He's still the only fighter to finish Max Holloway in the UFC. Uh, he's got wins over Bobby Green, Jim Miller, Anthony Pettis, Justin Gaethje, Eddie Alvarez, Dan Hooker. Two wins over Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler. He's also got losses against the Korean Zombie, Cub Swanson, Conor McGregor, Habib Nurmagomedov, Charles Oliveira, and most recently, Justin Gaethje in their rematch. He's had a bunch of layoffs in his career. We'll quickly go through those. Um, but again, he's been in the UFC, like I said, since 2011. Going from Eddie Alvarez to Max Holloway, there's a 259-day layoff. Going from Habib to Hooker, there was a 294-day layoff. Going from Hooker to McGregor, there was a 210-day layoff. Going from Oliveira to Chandler, there was a 336-day layoff. Going from Chandler to Gaethje, there was a 259-day layoff. And going from Gaethje to this fight, there was a 224 day layoff. So nothing like really major, but there are some gaps you can see there, especially as he's getting older in his career. Uh, Poirier has not had a, like a ton of injuries. The only one that really comes to mind is the Nate Diaz fight where he had that hip injury. That fight never took place in 2018. And then he's only had one fight that's been close in terms of, uh, you know, a decision. Uh, the Jason Young fight, which took place in Vancouver at UFC 131. Where is it here? Find it here. Uh, there we go. So this was back in again, 2011. And, um, you can see there, uh, two media members scored the fight for Poirier, two scored it for Young. So maybe could have gone the other way, but uh, not a big deal looking back now. Let's look at Poirier's UFC stats here. You can see there uh, for Poirier, significant strikes landed per minute. Just making sure I'm actually on Poirier here. Yep, is 5.49. Uh, striking accuracy is at 50%. His striking defense is at 53%. So he, he does get hit, but not as much as you'd think. Takedown average is 1.36. We'll see if we'll see any in this fight. His takedown accuracy is only 36%, but his takedown defense is 63%. Sub average is 1.2. So some pretty impressive of stats there for the diamond Dustin Poirier and that's pretty much everything you need to know about this fight again he has fought the who's who in the weight class and really excited to see how this one pans out but let's talk about his opponent the god of war Benoit Saint Denis you can see there 13 and 1 record he's got four knockouts nine submissions he's never gone the distance uh in his uh career other than the loss he had against Zaleski uh but as far as wins go he's never won by decision is what I'm getting at he's currently ranked number 12 in the lightweight division he's 28 years old he's 5 foot 11 with a 73 inch reach so he's seven years younger than Poirier and he's gonna have a two inch height advantage. He's a judo black belt. He's got performance on the night two times against Gabriel Miranda and Matt Frivola. He's got performance of the month uh, against Matt Frivola, if you want to count that. He's got fight of the night one time against Thiago Moises. Uh, he's got, he's the first French fighter to compete and win on a UFC card in France. He's also the first French fighter to be ranked in the lightweight division. He also, uh, yeah, he's a bunch of other accolades. I mean, for a guy who hasn't been in the UFC that long, his his uh, resume is pretty impressive. Uh, like Poirier, or actually I should say, unlike Poirier, uh, Benoit saint Denis did not have an amateur debut. This blew me away when I went to look this up. I kind of forgot about this. Benoit saint Denis made his pro debut in February of 2019. Like, we're talking just before the pandemic, or I guess a year before the pandemic. That's nuts. And here he is fighting Dustin Poirier a couple years later. Like... 
that that's crazy. It's that that's not that long ago if you think about it. So um, by the, just to give you a, like like an idea of how much uh, you know how how much longer Poirier has been fighting. Poirier, by the time Benoit Saint Denis made his pro debut, Poirier had 28 fights already. That's crazy. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, he made his debut shortly after that in October of 2021. Of course, you remember that fight against Zaleski? He almost got finished in that fight. And for whatever reason, Zaleski could not finish him. Uh, Benoit Saint Denis looked like the Terminator out there. That was crazy. I think some refs might have stopped that fight, but it was it was just an absolute uh, you know crazy fight. It was a uh, you know obviously a fight up a weight class as well for him. But that's the only loss he's had in the UFC that was up a weight class. And by that time, Dustin Poirier had 26 UFC fights by the time. Um, uh, uh, Benoit Saint Denis made his UFC debut, so that that's kind of crazy too. Just the experience gap there. You can see he's five and one in the UFC. He's got four stoppage wins. The only notable win he has really is Thiago Moises. You could put Bontham in there because there was a lot of hype behind him, but you know Bontham's not ranked or anything. Uh, for Vola, I don't. I actually was for Vola ranked at one point. Maybe he was. Um, so yeah, maybe for, well, okay. We'll say for Vola and Moises are probably his notable wins. He hasn't really had any notable losses as Zaleski, I think at one point was ranked, but not really too notable in the weight class. But again, he's only got six fights. So there's not really much to take away from, as you can see here, not a lot of layoffs, uh, not a lot of close fights. Obviously he's only gone the distance the one time against Zaleski and that fight was not close. Zaleski clearly won. Let's take a look at the stats here. You can see for Benoit Saint Denis, his striking uh, strikes landed per minute is 5.53. So similar to Poirier's numbers. Uh, you can see there uh, his striking accuracy is at 52%. His uh, significant strikes landed per minute is, uh, sorry, his uh, striking defense is at 44%. His takedown average is at 4.55. That'll be interesting. I mean, Poirier trains with some great wrestlers, so I don't know if that'll be much of a factor here. His takedown accuracy is at 36%, not very good there. His takedown defense is at 66%, and his sub average is at 1.4. So really interesting uh, fight from that perspective. Let's have a quick look at the odds. At the time of recording this, we do have some odds up here. And I think uh, not a surprise to most, you'll see Benoit Saint Denis is about a favor, well, it's almost about minus 150 around there if you take the average. Uh, but you can see here DraftKings having him at minus 135. Dustin Poirier, the underdog, at plus 114. So who am I picking in this fight? It's a tough one. It's a very tough one. Um, let's uh, quickly, before I give you my pick here, look at how people are scoring this on Tapology. 55% scoring it for St. Denis, 45% scoring it for Poirier. So a bit closer here on the Tapology odds. And again, these are just fan votes, like no no risk taken, taken so to speak, unlike the uh, betting odds, because obviously you're betting money there. Um, yeah, I've thought about this. There's a number of different ways I think this can go. We'll, we'll talk about that after I give my pick. But my official prediction for this fight is Benoit St. Denis, second round submission. Now I know it's a little bit crazy uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, Poirier is tough to finish. Number two, you've got the fact that uh, Benoit St. Denis, when you think of him, you kind of think of him more as a knockout artist. But if you actually look at his career here, um, Benoit St. Denis has 69% of his wins by submission. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think Benoit St. Denis is going to land on Dustin Poirier. And I think Poirier, I know he's seen it all. He's fought guys like Gaethje and Alvarez and McGregor and all these guys who have knockout power. So it's nothing new he hasn't seen here, but it's still going to hurt like hell because if you watch that fight that Benoit St. Denis had against Thiago Moises, he was landing at will and Moises didn't like any of that. And I think Poirier is going to experience the same thing here. So what I see happening here is St. Denis landing some really good shots and he's going to continue to lay them on Poirier. And Poirier, you know, I think he's just going to have to weather it and hope for a knockout himself here. I think he's going to try. I mean, if you're Poirier, I think the strategy here is, and I, I, you know, I, I got a bit of insight on this too. Like my understanding is the reason Poirier wanted this as a five round fight is because he thinks he can survive the early rounds. And if it goes later, he has the advantage there, which I would agree with him. I mean, again, Poirier has been five round Saint and he hasn't. So if you're talking about who has a five round advantage. It has to go to Poirier here. But what I think is going to happen here is Benoit Saint is going to land some really good shots. Second round, he's going to get his timing down even more and he's going to hit Poirier and he's going to knock Poirier to the canvas. It's not going to be like a head kick knockout like uh, Justin Gaethje. But what I see happening here is rather than trying to go for the TKO finish and overexert himself, I I see St. Denis going in there for the submission because again, if you look at Poirier's record, while he has been knocked out 38% of the time, he's also been submitted 38% of the time. So I think it's going to be a case where St. Denis knocks him down, goes in for the sub and finishes Dustin Poirier, kind of like Charles Oliveira did, although Por Oliveira did it a bit differently, but um, you kind of get where I'm going with this. I think St. Denis will look for the submission as opposed to the knockout. I, If you're going to bet this, I would just take St. Denis inside the distance because just in case he does clip Poirier and knock him out, I think it can happen. But uh, again, there, there's, there's a couple things there. Like I mentioned, there's 69% of his wins wins uh, for St. Denis by submission, uh, just 31% by KO, TKO. So he's not, he, you know, if you look here, while he does have knockout power, it's only 31% of his wins. So, I, you know, the stats lead more to a submission here. Um, Poirier has also been submitted in two of his last three losses, right? As opposed to being knocked out. Uh, the last knockout loss he had prior to Gaethje was the Michael Johnson knockout, which was way back in, when was that? 
um, 2016. So, you know, Poirier, you know, there are some questions about his chin throughout his career, but for the most part, it's held up. That's why I think if you're St. Denis and you probably are looking at that going, it's probably better to try and submit him here as well. Um, Poirier's age has to be a factor here. It is 35 years old. Again, he's coming off a knockout as well. Um, that has to be something we look at as well, too. Um, Poirier also doesn't really have a lot of upside in this fight. Like, I know he'd like to compete for a title again, but he's been there. He's lost the title fights. He's had those opportunities. What is he fighting for right now? To me, he's fighting to try and get back in that contender spot. There's a lot of pressure here. Let's call it like it is. If Poirier loses this fight, he's not getting another title shot. There'll be no path for him to do that because that'll be two key losses he's had to two really good guys in the weight class. And consider where St. Denis is ranked at number 12. I mean, that's not going to look good if he gets finished here by Benoit St. Denis. For St. Denis... Because of his age and because of the fact he doesn't have a ton of UFC fights, he's 28 years old. He loses this. It's no big deal. Like he has time to turn this around. Poirier doesn't. So if you think about it from a pressure standpoint, I think Poirier has got a lot more to lose here than Benoit St. Denis does as well. So, and the other thing I got to point out too, the reason I say second round finish is because if you look at St. Denis, all of his finishes in the UFC and even like outside the UFC are typically within three rounds, right? That That's one thing to kind of consider as well. Like he typically does get it done within two rounds. Like I don't think he's going to finish Poirier in the first round, but the second round, I could definitely see that happening. So again, my official pick for this fight, Benoit St. Denis, second round submission. I think he's going to knock Poirier down. Poirier's going to be stunned and St and he's going to go in for the submission win, and I think he gets it done. That's how I see this fight going. Now, quickly, got to mention this as well. If he can't finish Poirier within three rounds, I think Poirier wins. I don't think there's a question about that because I, I, you know, again, we have not seen St. Denis' cardio, but you have to think that five-round experience that Poirier had is going to pay dividends if it does go a little bit longer. So if you wanted to hedge this, I think it's worth it. I think you could do a Dustin Poirier or you could maybe bet the over in this fight and then hedge it with like a Benoit Saint Denis inside the distance, depending on the unit size. I think that's one of the ways you could get you could get away with this. Or you take like a like I think if there's a Dustin Poirier or you know five, you know starts round three or something prop, if you could look for something like that, that might be worth a stab as well. But I think what's most likely is Saint Denis getting the finish here. And the UFC knows what they're doing, right? What are you getting with Dustin Poirier at this, at this stage in his career, right? He's been very selective of who he's going to fight. I'm sure that's not easy for the U. I mean, it's clearly not easy with the UFC in terms of this whole fiasco, this fight almost not happening, like. Obviously, with a guy like Poirier, it's harder to book fights for him because of where he's at in his career. They want St. Denis to win. They've been going to Paris, okay? They've been uh, making that an annual destination for the UFC there. They want to build this guy up and make him a big star there. So if you if the UFC had their choice, and I'm not saying there's any fight fixing or anything dumb like that, but if they had their choice, they want Benoit St. Denis to win this fight. So that, that is one thing you have to consider here is that obviously this is a favorable matchup here for, for St. Denis. So again, second round submission for Benoit St. Denis. Let me know what you think in the comments. Which way are you going on this one? Who do you think wins? Again, if you're saying Poirier decision or Poirier later in the fight, I'm with you there. Um, I We have not seen Benoit St. Denis pass like the third round, right? Like other than the Zaleski fight and that was up a weight class. But I just think with Poirier's age and the fact that St. Denis looks so good in his last couple fights. And look, the Matt, going from Matt Favreau to Dustin Poirier is a big jump. But the Thiago Moises fight to me, the way he went out there and absolutely manhandled him. And Moises, as we know, is a guy that's been in the UFC for a bit. He's been a ranked opponent. That to me said, this is this guy's ready for the next level. And I think he can handle a guy like Poirier. So that's the way I'm going. Uh, follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. Uh, if there's any other fights you want me to preview, let me know. I typically hit the main events and I'll be hitting a bunch of the fights for UFC 300 as well, but wanted to get this one in. I'm James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.